Congregation, please stand. We do not live for ourselves, and we do not die for ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. In his great mercy, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us new birth into a living hope, the hope of an inheritance reserved in heaven, which nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. As the Father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. We would not have you ignorant brothers and sisters about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who do not have no hope. For saints, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. And blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, O oh Lord. We join in singing 22, through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble or in joy. And you 
Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you loved us with an everlasting love and can turn the shadow of death into the light of a new dawn. Help us now to wait upon you with reverent and submissive hearts in the silence of this hour. Speak to us of eternal things that with patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life which you have given us in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We are gathered here this afternoon, friends, family, to remember with love our dear sister, Gloria Lane. And so on behalf of the pastoral team, my senior pastor, Rosling Hamling, former Pastor here, Brother Delroy, Reverend Delroy, and myself, David Ains, we want to extend condolences to the family and friends of our sister Gloria. She was loved within this congregation, a staunch member. And so we say, God's peace and comfort be with you even at this time. And so as we continue in this act of thanksgiving and Remembrance of our dear sister. At this time, I'll just invite her granddaughter, Ingrid, to come and share with us the eulogy. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Glory Lane, the eulogy. Sunrise, December 5th, 1929. Sunset, May 5th, 2022. Into thy hands, O God. This is a service of thanksgiving for the life of Mrs. Gloria Lane. Gloria Jordan was born on December 5, 1929, to Mr. Holder, the postman, and Cecilia Jordan, also known as Ansis. She was the first of 13 children made up of two sets of twins, two twin boys who died before birth, and two twin girls, Auntie Carmen and Auntie Marie, who are here with us today. She was fondly nicknamed Dodo, as she would run around the house with the paper balled up like a horn, singing, do 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 And that nickname stuck with her throughout her adulthood. Gloria married Lionel Lane in 1948, and they had five children. Kingsley, Patricia, who they say I take after, Keith, my father, O'Brien, all deceased, and David. On meeting me sometime in February 1975, Grand and Granddad said I was a replica of Patricia, also known as Patsy, who died at age two. My mother said she took me to visit one weekend on Maxwell Hill, and I never returned. She said she never thought about it back then, but as it sank in over the years, it hurt her that I had been Grand Nat. So much so, Grand wanted to change my surname to Lane. Never a dull moment with Grand. We moved to number nine Moravian Gardens in December 1981 just up the road and down the 99 steps from our original home in Maxwell Hill. Oh, what a joyous Christmas that was. Uncle Kingsley and his family of Auntie Bull, Salim, Saida, and Nadia visited Barbados for the first time since he left some 40 years prior. Grand cooked for the entire gap that Christmas, and all Grand I kept saying was, you ain't planning on cooking till next year. To which Grand said, I have to make sure everybody eat. Grand was involved in some of, as she would say, everything possible. A home help nurse, an awesome cake maker, decorator, and tutor. I want to acknowledge Miss Wanda Harris, who would have been one of her students at that time. Hairdresser, ceramics maker and tutor, rabbit keeper, smocking, crochet, a delightfully avid cook, and don't talk about her beautiful array of flowers, from hibiscus to sunflowers, poinsettia to crotons, you name it, Gran had it. She had more flowers than hunts. She said, he opened seven days a week, I open eight. Along with her kitchen garden where she planted everything from cabbage, lettuce, beets, thyme, carrots, breadfruit, mangoes, avocados, bay leaf, and a gooseberry tree in the yard from which she made gooseberry jam and wine. Everything in that garden got sold to at that time, Super Center in Oystens and Big B in Worthing. Grand sold from wine to iodine. <clears throat> Little more she would have sold me. Grant was very active in this church, the Bethlehem Moravian. She was a Sunday school teacher and avid choir member. She would sing her favorite song, His Eye is on the Sparrow, every harvest, and she made sure 
I came up knowing everything she did, the cake icing, ceramics, and some extras, including playing the piano. She would say, I always wanted to learn to play the piano or organ, you know, but I didn't have the opportunity, so I will make sure you know how. Well, I certainly did. I graduated up to grade six in piano. I went on to represent this said church, Bethlehem Moravian, at the Moravian Church Organ Expo at the Calvary Moravian Church on Roebuck Street in 1991. Grant was real fussy and would say, you can still play a thing and carry a tune. I have continued my stint in music now, being a manager for some of the top artists and musicians in Barbados and overseas. Thank you for my musicianship, Grant. Grandad passed in August 2011, and Grand kept busy with her ceramics and gardening, plying her trade with garage sales, and still insisted on catching the bus to get her groceries, despite I offered to drop her to and fro. I prefer to catch the bus and make my runs, she would say. I have a lot of things to do, you know. She could be quite stubborn when she was ready. In, no in November 2017, Grand tripped and fell in the house and seemed to have had a concussion. Her sister Carmen, my mom, and I took her to Dr. Ramsey for her check through. Luckily, nothing was broken or bruised, and she was monitored throughout. Graham was a few weeks shy of her 80th birthday. A few months later in 2018, she was diagnosed with early dementia. That is when both our lives change forever. It was the most challenging time in my life. And it was now my turn to take care of her as she did with me from 1975. Home health came in up until 2019. Then the lockdown of March 2020 occurred and no home health was allowed to visit. It was Gran and I with the doves cooing persistently in the silence of the evenings and her babbling into her own world of delusion. The dementia was getting worse and I agreed to whatever she said as there was no one in that argument. Ah. To hear her babbling again will be joy to my ears. January 19, 2021. I wasn't feeling well that day. I gave Gran her breakfast as usual that morning and said to her, my mom will stay with you until I return. She said, you sure you coming back? Yes, Gran, I said, not knowing I wasn't returning that day until months later. I fell, in, I fell ill into a two-day coma. And yet again, our lives change this time forever, ever. Gran started to deteriorate as the months went by. The last time I saw her was Tuesday, March 19, 2022. She didn't look well at all. I held her hand, made a cross on her forehead, and whispered in her ear, it's okay, Gran, God got you. On May 5th, 2022, at 11 p.m., I got that dreaded call. My granny, my mother, was gone. Mrs. Gloria Lane had a full, gracious life and believed in her Lord. I pray that God purifies her soul as she enters his holy gates. Sleep well, Gran. I love you. Amen. At this time, I'll repeat a few verses of Gran's favorite poem, which she always did at harvest. It's called, or entitled rather, If Jesus Came to Your House. If Jesus came to your house to spend a day or two, if he came without warning, I wonder what you'd do. Yes, if Jesus came to your house to spend a day or two. If he came unexpected, just dropped in on you. Ah, I know you'd give your nicest room to such an honored guest, and all the food you serve to him would be your very best. And you would keep reassuring him that you're glad to have him there, that serving him in your home is joy beyond compare. But when you saw him come in, would you meet him at the door, with arms outstretched in welcome to your heavenly visitor? Or would you have to change your clothes before you'd let him in? Or hide some magazines and put the Bible where they had been? Would you turn off the radio and hope he hadn't heard? And wish you hadn't uttered that last loud hasty word? Would you hide your worldly music and put some hymn books out? Could you just let Jesus walk right in? Or would you rush about? And I wonder, if the Savior spent a day or two with you, would you go right on doing the things you always do? Would you go right on saying the things you always say? Would life for you continue as it does from day to day? Would your family conversations keep up its normal pace? And would you find it hard each meal to say a table grace? Would you sing the songs you always sing and read the books you read and let him know the things on which your mind and spirit feed? Would you take Jesus with you everywhere you plan to go? Or maybe would you change your plans for just a day or so? Would you be glad for him to meet your very closest friends? 
or hope that they stay away until his visit ends? Would you be glad to have him stay forever on and on? Or would you sigh with great relief when he at last was gone? It might be interesting to know the things that you would do if Jesus came in person to spend some time with you. If Jesus came to your house, I wonder what you'd do. My granny taught me here in this Sunday school back in the 1980s, early 1990s. And every Sunday school, every Sunday morning, we had to sing two psalms. Psalm 5 and Psalm 25. We sang them so regular, I know it by heart. And when I came out of my coma, those were the two psalms that I sang as part of my testimony. So, Gran, this is for you. <laughs> Psalm 5. Give it to my word, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto you will I pray, my voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning, Will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up? O oh Lord, in the morning, will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up? Psalm 25. Unto thee, O Lord, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, do I lift up my soul, unto thee, O Lord, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, do I lift up my soul, O my God, O my God, I trust in thee, I trust in thee, let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me. Teach me thy paths, teach me thy paths, thy paths, O oh Lord, thy paths, O oh Lord, teach me thy paths, teach me thy paths, thy paths, O oh Lord, thy paths, O oh Lord. Oh my God, oh my God, I trust in thee, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait, yea, let none that wait. On thee be ashamed, on thee be ashamed. Yea, let none that wait, yea, let none that wait. On thee be ashamed, on thee be ashamed. Oh my God, oh my God, I trust in thee, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me. Show me thy ways, show me thy ways. Thy ways, O oh Lord, thy ways, O oh Lord, show me thy ways, show me thy ways. Thy ways, O oh Lord, thy ways, O oh Lord. Oh my God, oh my God, I trust in thee, I 
trust in thee, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Amen. 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 Our sister, Gloria Lane, she has been a blessing to all that she has touched. And we here at Bethlehem have indeed been blessed. And at this time, we will have a tribute by the Bethlehem Moravian Choir.
thank the choir for sharing with us in that tribute, Be Strong in the Lord. We now have our scripture reading. It comes from the Psalms, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 13. And this will be read for us by Shaquille Miller, great-granddaughter. Good afternoon. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wing you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The lion, the young lion and the serpent shall trample under, under your foot. The word of the Lord. And so at this time we'll hear the favorite of our sister, his eye is on the sparrow. And so, Ingrid will come back to us and put that musical training to use. I'm not a singer, so I'm going to read this as a poem. And I'll ask you to join in on the chorus where I sing because I'm happy. Everybody sings with me. Thank you. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely and long for a heaven and home When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Everybody, let's sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because. Is me. One more time, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know, and I know, and 
I know he watches me. That was Granny's favorite song. Amen. His eyes on the sparrow. We're going to have our second scripture reading. This comes from the New Testament, Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. Read by Tawani Lane, the great granddaughter. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but believe, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a, char who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is God who died and, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or a sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more the conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Word of the Lord. So we'll have another tribute, this time by one Mr. Edwin Yewood, someone who I believe will be actually singing for us this time. And so we hear in tribute, Mr. Edwin Yewood. It's dawn, a new morning, and life goes on. It's darkness in my heart. That day will come 
where we'll be as one to watch rising suns cause life goes on so oh, i'm going home to my new abode beside me my lord i'm moving on i'm carrying on i'll take your hearts with me take all my memories so i won't be alone i'm moving on i'm carrying on so please don't you cry for me try just to smile for me and someday you'll see and now I am free, free to soar in the skies, free to watch the heavenly clouds passing by, free as a bird, I'm free as the wind, I'm peacefully moving on. I'm carrying on. I'll take your hearts with me. I'll take on the memories so I won't be alone. I'll I'm moving, I'm carrying on, so please don't you cry for me, try just to smile for me, and someday, some way you'll see, that now, now I am free, now. I am free. Oh, now I am free. So goodbye. Thank you, sir. Now I am free. Sister Gloria is free and resting in the arms of her Lord. And as we wait now to hear from God's holy scripture and gain some comfort from his word, we sing in preparation, Him be thou my guardian and my guide. After which the voice you would hear would be that of our senior pastor, the Reverend Rosling Hamling. Let's stand together as we sing together, Be thou my guardian and my guide.
and feel that I am frail. And if the tempter cross my way, he may not prevail. Maybe sit down. I join in extending sympathy to the family members, in particular Ingrid and David and all of the other members of the family, relatives, loved ones, as you at this time mourn the passing of your dear loved one, Sister Gloria. Indeed, her passing is being felt within the congregation as you would have heard say, she has been a stalwart of this congregation from the 70s when the, the church was first built here. And soon after that, she joined the congregation, even from up the hill, and then moving closer, continued to serve here. And so we pray that you would find that your church family here as that means of support for you, remembering that indeed God is your refuge and strength and a very present help in times of trouble. May God strengthen and keep you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, we give you thanks for your goodness and your love and for the life loaned to us for a season. Now that you have taken our sister to yourself, we pray you to comfort and strengthen us and speak to us this day through your word. Help us then as we reflect on your word that we may be drawn close to you and that we may be propelled to walk closely with you. Grant, therefore, that the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts together may find acceptance in thy sight, O thou, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. This evening, I wish to draw your attention to words found in another nearby psalm, another psalm, which is frequently used at times like these. We read from Psalm 91 this afternoon, reminding us that those who abide in the shadow of the Almighty can therefore say of him, he is my refuge and my fortress in whom I trust. But in Psalm 90, verse 12, says to us, so teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom, that we may give our hearts to understanding. The psalmist in the psalm is noting the, the regular general span of life of any individual and notes in verse 10 that it would tend to be about 70 and maybe for the stronger ones, 80. And I dare say for the extraordinary ones, like our dear sister, 90 and 92. She lived to the age of 92. But she had followed the prescription of Psalm 90, verse 12, throughout her years. So teach us to number our days, that we may give our hearts to understanding, to wisdom. Indeed, it reminds me of this saying that it is not the days in our life, but the life in our days. Not the number of days that we live but the way in which we live out those days. 
In other words, my friends, it says to us, or should say to us, that we must make every day, every moment count. And this I can truly say of Sister Gloria Lee. From early in life, she had given her heart to Jesus Christ. And so, when this congregation moved from up the sea rocks over here to Maxwell, she soon became a member of this congregation, even before she was living next door. And so she would walk down the hill and come to share. And throughout her days, she was faithful in church, in service to God within this congregation, in witness to her Lord. As you would have heard, she became involved in this Sunday school here at Bethlehem. She became a member of the choir in the early days, and I recently looked at a picture, well, in fact, I think it was a picture of my ordination service. And she was up front and center, singing her heart out. And you know why? Because one of the things that I always remember and admired about Sister Lane was her love and support for the youth, for the young people. We could call on her, and she would be there to support. Whatever was happening related to the youth, even if the rest of the audience, congregation gathering, the young people, be sure that Sister Lane was there to support the young people. And she was always praying for the young people. I do recall that in those early days, one of her favorite choruses was, and I don't know how many of you remember this chorus from back in the day, Teenager, are you lonely? Do you need a friend? Take Jesus as your savior. He'll be with you to the end. He'll be your guide, stand by your side. Teenager, take Jesus today. And that was one of her favorites because she had that heart for the young people and would encourage the young people every step of the way. In fact, she was always at prayer, young, old, whatever. If there was prayer meeting, be sure she was there. Be sure when time came to pray, she would be praying. And even in her later years, even since dementia has set in, you go to visit Sister Lane as a certain member, you do communion with her, you offer prayer with her, and then she's going to pray for you. That was the heart our dear sister had. She well understood this psalm, this verse, and translated it in this way. Make wise use of your time. And so that is what she sought to do, and not only within the church, but I know, and, and I noted, I have it written down, but I noted that in great Senate as well, she gave her time in sewing and a variety of craft, including baking and especially cake icing. That I can recall. She made wise use of her time. She put all of her talents to use. And she did so for her God as well as for the good of her community. And so there are many who would be able to tell of how 
her talents were used to help them, whether it was the preparation of cake for a wedding or the sewing of things or other craft items. And of course, whenever she had opportunity, she sang her solo. And there was a third that willingness to participate in sharing the word via visitation. Hers was a full life. She had been careful to number her days, to see to it that her days were filled with positive and productive activity for her Lord, for her family, for her community. And so I'd ask today, what is to be the message for us? What do we take away from this word and from the life of our dear sister? Firstly, I want you to take away from here the thought that you should trust God. Rely on him. For he provides, and she well knew this. She understood this. And so she did not think, well, if I use my talent to help somebody else, if I give what I have to help somebody else, what would become of me and what would happen to me? She was able to trust God, knowing that he provides, knowing that he takes care, knowing that he protects. And so she could live where Psalm 91, which we read this afternoon, is. Those who dwell in the shelter or the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty and will be able to say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my strength in whom I will trust. My friends, He is faithful. And so, it really is simply left for you to put Him in control to allow him to take care of everything for you. To know that he is available to you. Secondly, I would suggest to you that you obey God. Because you trust him, you can obey. And you know what the songwriter says, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And so, my friends, know, understand, recognize that his desire is for us all to give him our hearts. His desire is for you to give him your heart. As Romans 8, which was also read this evening, suggests to us, he gave his son for us. He allowed him to come and die in our place. To take care of that situation of our sin for us. And all he wants in return is for you to accept the invitation to accept this gift. It is a free gift. And he calls you to obey him in this way. Saying to him, come into my heart, come into my life. Take care, take control. In other words, my friends, we need to make it count that he died for us that he gave himself for us. And so obediently he calls us to give him our heart, our lives. And that, I am sure, 
sister Lynn would want for you to do at this time. As she walked with him, so she would want you to be able to walk with him, to be obedient to him in that way. As she was able to trust him, so she would want you to be able to trust him and to have your needs met in him. Thirdly, I invite you to serve God. To make your time here useful to him. To give of yourself to him, for him, in his service. And so you may ask yourself the question, what would he have me to do? How can you serve others? In these days of the pandemic, I can assure you that there are many ways in which you can help others. That there are so many ways in which persons are hurting, persons are in need, the life situation of so many persons have changed in so many ways. Now, if it is only to pray for another person, indeed, my friend, there is a some way in which you can help another, in which you can serve God through service to others. And so I challenge you to keep your eyes open for the opportunities that avail themselves. And even when you fail to see an opportunity presenting itself before you, to create an opportunity to assist someone else. The question then becomes, what is your niche? Not only in church, but also within this world. Where can you fit in and be of use to others? How can you make wise use of your time? How can you so number your days, wherever you are at now, it's not too late once you're still breathing. When you stop breathing, there's no more you can do. And so take the opportunity now to so count your days, make them count for something in the life of another and for your Lord. And indeed, to make your life feel meaningful and purposeful and to get the most out of your life, even for yourself. And therefore I say to you, let her life influence yours. You know, besides leading the service this afternoon, and preaching, we really didn't have much to do for this afternoon. Sister Lane had chosen all of her hymns. She knew about her life in God, and she knew that there was a more joyous occasion coming for her, and she prepared towards it. And I say to you, let her life influence yours. Let it allow you to make your life meaningful. The story is told of an elderly man who encountered a young man who was going off to college, to university, to study. 
And so they had a conversation. And the old man asked him what he was going to be focusing on and what he was going to be doing at university. And as they chatted, the old man asked him, well, after completing your education at university, then what? The young man said, oh, well, I will build a home because I will get a good job and earn lots of money. And the old man said, and then what? Well, having built my home, I will marry and I will have a family. The old man said, and then? The young man said, well, I will travel the world and enjoy life. The old man said, and then? He said, well, I will retire in style and comfort. The old man said, and then what? He said, well, I suppose one day I will die. The old man said, and then? He said, the young man said, oh, I'll have a lovely funeral. They'll bury me. The old man said, and then? The young man could not go any further. He could not even conceptualize of what there was beyond this. The old man said, and then where will you spend eternity? The young man confessed that he was stumped. He had given no thought to such. My friends, that is the question to you this evening. You're probably making your plans. And you have your path charted. But the question that I will posit to you this afternoon is, and then? What after you have carried out this stage of the plan and the next stage of the plan? What after you have died? And then what? I am sure that Sister Lane knew, and then what for her? And she knew that death is just the gateway to eternal life in glory with her heavenly father, rejoicing and singing again. Yes, his eyes on the sparrow, our teenager, are you lonely? Or one of the Psalms. But my friend, she too would wonder, and then what for you? For you as her loved ones, she's hoping that you will be uniting with her in glory, that she will be seeing you again. And so I challenge you, as you go away from here, to seek to answer the question, and then what? Where will you spend eternity united with her and other loved ones who may have gone on before or alienated from God, from your loved ones, from the joy that could await you. My challenge to you is to bear in mind that there is no other in whom you can find salvation but Jesus Christ. So, seek to abide under the shadow of the Most High, to dwell in his shelter, to know him as your refuge 
and strength to trust him, to obey him, to serve him, and in so doing, to make wise use of your time so that even here on earth, the blessings will redound to you. You will experience his blessings as you give yourself in service for him. My friends, where will you spend your eternity? After you have made and fulfilled all your plans, then what? Reflect, respond. And my prayer is that you will be able to rejoice in your Lord because your answers are appropriate. Amen. Amen. In response, we will stand together and sing all to Jesus. I surrender. Let's all stand.
Lord, I give myself to sisters and brothers, you may be seated. First, let me say, express my deepest condolences to the family and friends at this time on behalf of my family, to your family, considering that the situation and perhaps what you're going through at this time. We pray God's mercy upon you and that you will gather strength and that you will have peace in him as you mourn our dear late sister, Sister Gloria Lean. We continue now in prayer as we respond appropriately, as we share together. Let us as we share in this prayer. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. By your human birth, by your obedience and faithfulness, by your prayers and tears, by your agony and passion, by your dying words, by your recording, reconciling death, by your rest in the grave, by your triumphant resurrection, by your abiding presence. Together we share in our Lord's prayer, which he has taught us. Together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Most holy and merciful God, the refuge and strength of those who put their trust in you, we thank you for the multitude no one can number, whom you have received into your eternal joy. We praise you that you have forgiven them all their sins and that they dwell with you beyond evil and sorrow forever. We thank you also for all whom amid the, the trials of this mortal life, you give the faith that overcomes the world, who have peace in you and rejoice in hope of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And together we say, Amen. Amen. We continue in prayer. Eternal God, before whose face the generations rise and pass away, we bless and praise your name for all who have departed this life in faith, and especially for our sister Gloria. For all your kindness to her throughout her earthly life, we give you thanks. We thank you that for her all sickness and sorrow are ended, and that life is and that death itself is past. Almighty God. May we, inspired by the example of your saints, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking 
to Jesus, the author and protect, protector of our faith, so that when this mortal life is ended, we may be gathered with those whom we have loved in the kingdom of your glory, where there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Father of mercies and God of all comfort, you make nothing in vain and love all that you have made. Look in tender mercy on your people in their loss. Enable them to find in you their refuge and their strength, a very present help in trouble. Sustain and deliver them from bitterness, despair and doubt of your love. Comfort them in their sadness. Uphold them with your strong love. Help them to face the future without fear, knowing that they and all whom they love are in your hands, and that nothing in this life, not even death itself, can separate any one of us from your love in Jesus Christ, O Lord. O God, our Father, by whom we are led through the changes of time to the rest and blessedness of eternity, be near us to comfort and uphold us, Make us to know that your people are precious in your sight and that they live evermore with you. As we thank you for Sister Gloria, whose life we shared, may we trust you with, at this time of parting. O oh God, give us of your strength that we may take up our lives more bravely and seek to be more faithful in duty and more loving and helpful to, do, to others following those who are no longer with us here on earth. And may we, in our turn, find in your great mercy the perfect and unending rest of God through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Let us commend our sister glory to the mercies of God our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your power you gave us life, and in your love you have given us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust, Sister Gloria, to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again, that we might enjoy eternal life. And may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Our recessional hymn this evening, as we make our way to the Christ Church Cemetery, we sing, Be Thou My Vision. my vision, O Lord of my life, be the words to be the night, be the my best thought in the day and the night, both waking and sleeping, thy presence my Be thou my vision, be thou my true word, be thou ever with me, and I with thee, Lord. Be thou my faithful and thou my true son. Be thou in me, Lord.
We continue in worship. Jesus said, Set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. We know that when our earthly frame is destroyed, we possess a building provided by God eternal and in heaven. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. All who have faith in me live even though they die. No one who lives and has faith in me shall ever die. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Thanks be to God who gives the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have entrusted Gloria Lane to God's merciful keeping, and now we commit her body to the ground. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever 
and ever. Amen. Amen. O Father of all, we pray to you for those whom we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with all who mourn that casting every care upon you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, support us all the day long of this earthly life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life over, and our work done. Then, O oh Lord, in your mercy, grant us and those we love safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at last. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in the communion of saints, we thank you for all your servants who have departed in the faith, the great cloud of witnesses by whom we are encompassed, who in every age have loved you in life and continued faithful unto death, especially those most dear to our own hearts. Give us grace with them to follow you and bring us at the last to those things which I have not seen nor ear heard, which thou hast prepared for them that love you. Amen. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us all. Amen. Amen. Nearer, my God, to thee. We send that in church.
continue to lift our voices in praise to Almighty God as we continue in song. Abide with me, abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Shine to the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks, and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide with me. We continue singing that well-known favorite of ours, Blessed Assurance, song of comfort, knowing that we are safe in our Savior's arms. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood.
This is my story. This is indeed our song. We can praise our Savior in spite of all happening all the day long. And so we know our sister loved to sing. And so we continue. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. The assurance of those who know the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the save of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. May God continue to strengthen you as you put your trust in him. Seek to obey him and serve him. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we look to you now knowing that we never look in vain. Conscious, O oh God, that you have promised to supply all of our needs and that you are the comfort and strength of all who put their trust in you. And so as you have taken our loved ones, Sister Gloria Lane, to yourself, we pray that you would comfort and strengthen those who mourn her passing. But even as you receive her joy, the words, well done, good and faithful servant, and so to those who remain, may seek to live their lives that they may hear a similar welcome and may be reunited with their loved one. And so we ask you to strengthen all who mourn as we go away from this time of sharing, of giving thanks for the life of our sister. May her life influence us all to walk closely with you. Continue then to be that friend who remains closer than a brother or sister to all who mourn at this time. 
And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with all now and always. Amen. Amen.